God has planned great things for the Jewish people. In Genesis 17, verse 7, he promises, I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you. And in Jeremiah 31, verse 37, God says that only if the heavens can be measured and the foundations of the earth below be searched out will I reject all the descendants of Israel because of all they've done. In Jeremiah 31, verse 35 to 36, we learn that these promises are unconditional. When God proclaims, I who appoint the sun to shine by day, who decrees the moon and the stars to shine by night, who stirs up the sea so that its waves roar, declares, only if these decrees vanish from my sight will the descendants of Israel ever cease to be a nation before me. God's purpose for the Jewish people is utterly unique. In Genesis 12, verse 1 to 3, God promises the Jewish people through Abram, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the peoples of the earth will be blessed through you. God's intention is that Israel will reflect his light into a dark world to such an extent that Gentile nations will crave salvation instead of darkness. In Isaiah 49, verse 6, God promises, I will also make you a light to the Gentiles that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. It, it's meant to work in the same way that we get rid of the darkness in a room. We don't push the darkness out. We simply switch the light on. Israel is to be the lighting system of the world, and God is to be its power supply. Israel's witness will increasingly impact the nations by shining the light of God's love into the darkness of a lost world. To turn your back on Israel is to turn your back on God. Times change, but the devil's strategy does not. His strategy is the same as it was with Eve in the Garden of Eden. Just as he harnessed the events of the early church and then of the Reformation, so he's harnessing today's events with the lie. Did God really say Israel is still significant? Luther's breakthrough focused on how to be made personally right with God. And it certainly met the needs of the people. But had Luther emphasized what salvation is for, which is the righteousness of God, church history might have been very different. Yeshua never said, seek first your own personal salvation. In fact, the words personal salvation cannot be found anywhere in Scripture. Of course, we need to be made personally right with God. But it's his kingdom which is at the center, not ours. He's at the center, not us. We're to seek first and foremost his kingdom and his righteousness. Anything else is a distortion of the gospel. History is history. Our challenge today is which way will we go? What action will we take to burst the bubble of the church's delusion? How far will we seek the greatness of God's purposes? On this hinges the scope for the devil to keep perpetrating his ancient deception. So we have a choice to let him go on propagating this lie or to own these words from Proverbs. The righteous are as bold as a lion. Our declaring the greatness of God's saving purposes will usher the coming of the Lion of Judah. He will come as a roaring lion he will declare his lordship over the fullness of his territory. He will then fulfill the prophecy of Hosea. How can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I hand you over, Israel? They will follow the Lord. He will roar like a lion. When he roars, his children will come trembling from the west. They will come trembling like birds from Egypt, like doves from Assyria. 
I will settle them in their homes, declares the Lord. The question is, will you take this key and use it yourself?